welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today we are reviewing The Quest Kids by Treasure Falls Games. It plays two to four players for 30 minutes. And it's for ages five and up, which means this is for little kids as well. Uh, this game is a small type dungeon crawl game where you'll take your hero, one of the many different characters to choose from the game, you'll set it on the board along with a bunch of dungeon tiles, and you'll move around the board attempting to accomplish quests, gather treasures, and fight monsters. And uh, as the game progresses, you'll get stars. And whoever has the most stars by the time that all the tiles here have been removed will be the winner of the game, the Quest Kids. So we'll show you how you set the game up. Then we'll talk about how to play the game. Rather simple, both of them want them. And then we'll talk about our review for the game. And of course, it's on Kickstarter now too, I believe, with the expansion. So you can watch it and take a look at it as well. To begin a game of the Quest Kids, you're first going to have each player select a character, and each of the characters are going to have a color. And of course, they're also gonna have one of these 3D little standy guys, or the printed 3D miniature. Uh, and on your board, it's gonna have all the different locations for you to place your cards. You're also going to get a singular card in the rulebook uh, that is either power, magic, or wisdom. In this case here, Noah is gonna start with a power card. And they're also all gonna start with three HP. You place them on their life center tracker area here. And you're also going to have um, one quest you'll start with that can be face up and revealed to all players. Everything else, uh, like the treasures, they're going to start in this little treasure bag here. You're going to also have these little gems that will start off of the game board. There is a saving or a scoring chart over here, and then you're gonna have the main game board, which at least we'll talk about how that's set up. So you will take all of the gray and green um, tile cards and shuffle them up and place them on the board. And then you'll also take the red tile cards and shuffle those separately place those as well. There's a space for the quest cards, the um, life cards, and then the kind kid cards. And then you have your three, uh, the power, magic, and wisdom cards that you'll place on the board as well. And these are all the exact same card, so you just need to place them down. All the rest of them get shuffled. And the last thing is you'll take your character and place it on the start area, which is this little path here to the entrance of the dungeon, which has a little door here where it shows that you can walk into. And that's pretty much how you set the game up. Everybody gets their character and everything that comes with their character, and then you set the board up and you begin the game. To begin the game, the first player starts, uh, whoever was on their last adventure will be the first player. Um, so you will select a tile and you will attempt to defeat it after exploring it. And um, you'll collect that if you defeat it or if it's um, you get resources from it. The next player will come to either go to a tile that's already been revealed or to a new tile. Yeah, and basically, you when you start in the game board, there's walls that block off certain areas of play. So you'll go through the door and you'll flip over the tile that is adjacent. Um, and then after that, you're gonna be able to not only select any tile that is face up, but also any tile or, or instead of any tile that is next to it. So you have a wide variety. There's no amount of movement in the game necessarily. So if you have two open spaces on your board here, then you'll have an, uh, access to any tile that is available to you, ignoring the amount of movement Movement. You're just going to move and then you're going to select one of those spaces. And also, if there's a tile that's face up already, you can select any of the tiles that you're able to get to, as well as any of them past the tiles that have been explored as well. Most of the tiles are just going to give you something. Like in this case, this one here is going to give you any uh, two of these choice resources, whether it be one of, one of these cards here, or whether it be a treasure card or a treasure tile, which you're going to take from this bag here. Usually they're going to give you some type of victory points, and it's going to be based off of what uh, character you are, whether it be one if you're not the character, or three or two if you are the character. And the, yeah, it's very, very simple. On your turn, you move to a tile, you flip it over, and you do what it says. If not, uh, you can go to a tile that's already revealed and you can do what that says. And most of them just require you to have certain cards. Um, the other, in, in any case though, most of these tiles here that are green are gonna give you resources. The gray ones are going to either give you resources or sometimes they're going to have you fight monsters. And then the red ones are a little more challenging. Most of the time it's gonna be monsters. And in addition to that, there's going to be certain types of things that pop up. Like for instance, these gems are gonna be found available on the quest board here. And uh, if you turn in the certain cards that you need to turn in, you will be able to get 
that specific type of card. Like for instance, uh, this one here is a Tolk Gem of Power, which is the purple one here, which you'd place on this card. And in order to get this card, you must get these two purple uh, resources and give this to back to the bank. So I have one of them. If I had another one, I could turn these in. If I picked this card or walked over to this card, I would then take this card and I would score the card along with the gem, of course. Um, other ones might be something like this where it just simply gives you two power. So when you flip over this guy, you'll just get two of these power cards and you'll put it into your character board. And then other ones, I'll just go ahead and hopefully pick one up. Oh, this is a super good one. <laughs> but other ones are going to be over here, which is the talk Gem of Wisdom, which is the red one. Um, another one is going to be hopefully a monster if I can find one here. Uh, here it is. Here, Cinder and Ash. And this one, and this one, it's going to give you five victory points if you defeat it. But it's going to cost you two purple, two yellow, and two red to defeat it. If you do not have the cards needed to defeat the monster, one of two things will happen. A, you'll lose a life, in which case you'll lose two victory points at the end of the game. Or B, you can ask for help. How does help work? So the person. First person next to you can help you with one card. Um, they will get a kind kid card for helping you. And then they get one chance to help you. And then the next person will get a chance to help you. And they can keep going around in circles, basically. Mm -hmm. So you can keep asking for help over and over again until people decline help after t taking a card. Or you've gotten all the cards you need, in which case you turn them all in and defeat the monster. So you can cooperatively work together to help players, but it is a competitive game. So when you do help players, you're going to be getting a, a unique benefit, whether it be an extra turn here, or whether it be an extra HP, or whether it just be simply an any resource and a star. So you'll get more additional points when giving players cards. So it's always helpful to be helpful in this game. And then that's it. That's basically the idea of the game. You flip over cards, you get resources, or you spend resources. Once all the tiles have been revealed and removed, um, there's going to be a period in time which everybody gets an extra one or two turns uh, to finish the game up. You're going to add up all your points on the board, and whoever has the most wins. The last thing is quests. Uh, at the end of your turn, and during your turn, if you complete this objective, it'll, usually it's in hand at the end of your turn, if you have these, then you will turn this quest in and you'll gain the victory points for it and you'll draw a new quest. And you can only complete one quest at a time, once per turn, and you're just trying to do whatever it says, having three yellows in your hand. At the end of your turn, if you have that succeeded, you draw a new one here, and now you need to scare two bad guys away, and so on and so forth, and that's how you're gonna get points. The last thing to note too is there's an advanced mode of gameplay where at the end of the game, if you have been the person to defeat the most monsters, you'll get certain points, or if you're the person who's collected the most of these gems, you'll get a certain number of points, and so on and so forth. It just adds a little bit more variety in, way, in the ways that you score and changes the game up just a little bit. But in any case, that's the idea for the Quest Kids. It's a dungeon crawl little kid game that's family friendly and works for everybody. So let's talk about the Quest Kids. <laughs> I almost said the Kids Quest. In fact, I probably said that once uh, previously, I'm sure, but it is the Quest Kids. Uh, this is for younger kids. This is a very, very simple game. It's very, very straightforward. And most of the pieces are not needed. Mainly they are just used for like the holding aspect, the feeling of holding and moving pieces. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. Uh, in the game, we'll start off with gameplay, I suppose. You're just moving around the board. You can go anywhere you want as long as uh, it's it's open, right, into an open space. So I couldn't get to here, but I could go uh, to here, to here, to here, to here, and uh, here, here, here. And you, you flip over a tile, and then you do whatever it says. Sometimes it'll help you and be beneficial. Sometimes it will be a cost, and you'll either have to ask for help, or you will fail and you will lose in HP. You're never out of the game though. If you ever lose all your life, it just means you skip a turn and on your next turn you'll get a life back and you'll keep going. Um, and you're trying to complete quests and uh, fight monsters. It's uh, very light, uh, very family friendly, and it works very, very well. Um, it's light, light dungeon crawler, and it does exactly what I think it says it's, it's meant to do as far as gameplay goes. Uh, another thing I want to talk about really quick before I throw it to her is the kind cards. These things are probably the most interesting and most uh, unique aspect and my favorite aspect of the game because it allows players to give you cards when you need them at a benefit to them, whether it gives them extra turn or extra victory points or more resources, people are going to be more inclined to help you because it will also help them as well. So it's a nice way of teaching people that it's not always uh, necessary to be mean in a game to be successful. And it does a very good job at giving a moral lesson to kids as well when playing a game that is competitive. So uh, those are the main aspects of gameplay I liked. It's very, very straightforward, very easy to play. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite part about it too, the kind kid cards, because yeah, you can get a lot of points from that and you're also helping other people so 
it's like a win-win situation. It like makes you feel better about the game. Yeah, it's very, very seldom where games that are so competitive can be uh, adding such an interesting cooperative method, but mm -hmm. it still benefits a player. If I have a card and I need to, I don't know, fight Chompy here, who's got two purples and a red, and I don't have any of these cards, and Alicia helps me with all of these cards, yeah, I'll get three victory points, but she's going to get three of these cards here. What do you think is most likely going to be better? I'll just draw three cards here at the top. She's going to get an extra turn an extra HP, which is worth two victory points, and then two cards of any type in this stack here. Or she can choose two treasure tokens, and we'll flip over two treasure tokens and see what she's gonna get here as well. She's going to get uh, one victory point if she's not yellow, and one victory point if she's not yellow. So if she's the yellow player, she's gonna make five victory points here, two victory points here in an HP, and an extra turn. That is massive. Helping people is so important in this game that it's almost necessary. It's almost better than taking an extra turn if you have those resources available to you. So yes, it very much so does uh, benefit those players who are nice, who are helpful in this game. Um, Co-quality of the game. The game is very high quality. In fact, uh, I'd almost say if this was a game for made for adults, it might be even overproduced. And usually I, the way I work overproducing is when I consider pieces to be just they're there just for their looks. In like certain cases, like for instance with these guys here, you don't really need them to move around the board. You could technically not even have these guys here and just select a tile that is currently available, you flip it over and you accomplish it or you don't, or you select a tile that is face up and you accomplish it or you don't. But, 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 with kids, I think these are almost mandatory because kids love to hold these things. They're actually rather big and rather nice, really easy to use. Um, and it feels like they're going around in the dungeon. It feels like they're participating and playing the game when they move around. They can keep their characters in certain areas and it gives them kind of an idea of what tiles are available based on where the kids are. Even these big gems, pointless. You don't really need them as long as you have the card that you've successfully accomplished. But then again, this is for kids. And a big fat gem holding this shows that they have accomplished something, which I think is very important to a game and uh, does, an exact, it does a really, really good job of doing so. All the cards are very simple. This play is five and up, and I do believe that because all the cards are really, really easy to understand. The most complicated are these little quest cards, and they're not even that hard to understand mm -hmm. either. And even all the monsters are kind of cute. Even the, the wording in the game, you're not actually killing anything. You're like bonking them on the head, so to speak, which does, does a good job of the, uh, intermingling with the game's theme and gameplay and stylization. Um, so yes, overall quality is high and good because it's high. And in general, when I would normally consider something overproduced, in this case, I do not. I think these are actually beneficial and even uh, almost necessary in certain cases for playing with younger kids. What about you? You like the quality of the game? Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, the monsters are cute, like Chompy. I mean, he's a cute little monster. Polly and Smidge. This is a, what is this guy? It's like a parrot with a little guy on top of it. Yeah. A cute monster. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and so very, very kid friendly. Yeah. Uh, the player boards too. What do you think? They, they, I think these are pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, yeah. I had them in a box for a while, and I'm afraid maybe the moisture got to them and they were a little bendy. But they are thick. They are high quality, and they do re work really well. So it could be just my humidity and not really the game's fault necessarily. But it's something you might want to look out for. Um, and I, the bag is a good quality. It's also got the inline mm -hmm. on it and the pieces inside are nice and thick as well. Yeah, overall quality of this game is, is super, super good. And it's going to be good for kids because kids should definitely have something that's higher quality because they're very likely to be very aggressive uh, to games. Yes. And more likely to chew on things maybe or like put, you now maybe not at five years old put things in their mouth, but I don't know, maybe uh, this kind of looks tasty to me, so... <laughs> Exactly. So yes, gameplay is right on point for kids. It's gonna work really great for families. It's a good teaching method for learning new dungeon crawlers, hand management, spending resources, gaining, helping people, helping people yes. to help yourself. Super good. Quality of the game is excellent. The artwork is super cute. Um, I don't have much to say negative about the artwork. I feel like this is gonna be suitable for the exact audience mm -hmm. that um, they are looking for. I think some people probably wouldn't like some parts of the uh, artwork, but I think those gonna be more of those like modern gamers looking for a modern game for adults rather than actually what this game is meant for which is families and kids and like I said the quest kids does everything that it sets out to do and it does it very well it is a lot of fun we played it with three adults and we all had a lot of fun playing it as well and learning about the game 
Uh, the one small negative I have for the game is that when you help people in the rules, if I need four cards and I have none, I don't have those four cards, and Alicia has two and Callie has two. Alicia gives me one, Callie gives me one. They each get a card. Alicia gives me one, she gets a card. Callie, I need that last card. I'm not going to give you that last card. Not sure what exactly happens. Do I keep the three cards they gave me and fail the bad guy and lose an HP? Or are they forced to help me with the treasure? If they are either all in or they're not all in, I'm not too sure. But I think if the case is, and which I think this is, that they can stop whenever they want, they can be extra, extra mean with a thing that should be kind. So, yeah. oh, I'll give you all the cards you need and then you only give me five of the six. You get five kind kid cards and I get nothing and lose an, H lose an HP, which Leslie makes me lose victory points. So I guess that could add to the competitive nature of the game if you want. But what the game is going for is to be kind, to mm -hmm. get benefits. And without express more detailed ruling in that aspect, kids can be rather aggressive with how they give out their cards by helping, but not really helping. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen with kids. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any negatives for you? No. Um... Yeah, like you said, I think it should be more clear in the rules, like, how far you can help the person. Yeah, we didn't use this either, the score tracker. Uh, we yeah. didn't need to use that at the points. I mean, it is, it is helpful if you do, I guess, need them. You can write, it's for each player, you get to write down your HP, the, the stars for your HP and your bad guys, and then your gold coins, and your kind kid cards, and your gems, and then your quests, and then you get a total points. And this is one for each player. Which um, would be good for kids because it's really, really big, but also it is an extremely a large amount of paper for just a small amount of math. Um, so adults maybe not need these, but maybe for your kids it'll be very, very useful. Overall, I give this a seal of recommendation for those of you who have kids or um, want to play games with their kids. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. If you're an older adult gamer, You'd still probably have fun with this game, but I don't know how much replayability it's going to satisfy for those people who are looking for a very in-depth experience. Yeah? Yeah. 100% agree on the same thing? <laughs> I would play it again. Okay. So you like it? I like it, yeah. This is something, would you play with Philip and Caleb? Yes. Do you think they'd be just as nice as you were? Um, maybe. I think Caleb would. Wow! I don't know about Philip though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Quest Kids is currently down below, and it's on Kickstarter. I believe there's an expansion, at least two. There's a campaign mode, and there's an expansion that's, I think, currently on Kickstarter or will be in the next coming days. Take a look at it if you're interested. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you like this video, you can take a look at the cha our, our, our links down below in the description. We can see more videos uh, just like this one, as well as picking up the game, the Quest Kids, and any expansions and Kickstarter content. You can check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, where we have blog posts and giveaways and Kickstarter lists and more. We have our live stream every... Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games uh, like this one all the time. We play games, we give away games all the time there. Um, that's pretty much all I got this time. Thank you for watching, and as always, I look forward to... Going on a quest with you kids next time. Next time.